This is a topic that I find very important to finally being addressed on my channel. Kimono and size. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. Today's topic is a topic I have been extremely often confronted with in the past four weeks and I thought now it's finally time to actually address this problem. Kimono and sizes. But before we jump into this, be aware that English is not my native language and that I usually live and work here in Japan in Japanese. So I would actually be way more confident to make this whole video in Japanese. I'm not gonna do this. So if there are any words that might hurt you, I want to apologize. I try to be as sensitive about this topic as I can. There is also a big problem with me that I I am already in a state, in a kimono state, that I don't think about sizes anymore. I only think in shapes. So when I talk about too short or too small kimono, that usually is not that I want to say anyone else has overweight or not. That is just simply that kimono is too small. So I want to clarify that first. So let's jump into that. So first, I want you to remember that there is no size, there is only a U size. There is no XS, S, M, XL, XXL, and so whatever what is ever existing there. That is just something that the fashion society nowadays forces on you to make mass production actually possible. And this is not only limited to kimono, but when we speak specifically about kimono, every kimono is actually tailored to each customer's measurements. And it's also a garment that is mostly worn in Japan. So let's take a look about average sizes in Japan. The average height of a Japanese woman today is 157 centimeter. And pre-war it was about 149 centimeter. Men today have an average height in Japan of 170 centimeter. And this makes this whole population here actually already quite small. When we talk about weight, I found a statistic from 2014 where they say that Japan has only an obesity rate in their population of 3.3%. This is like nothing. And when you ever come to Japan, I think a lot of people will feel that Japanese people are very thin and skinny. And yes, I do think so too. I really think that there are a lot of skinny people actually here in Japan. So when we bring this to kimono, every kimono is made to each customer's measurements, which means when you have a population with smaller people and skinnier people, of course, kimono turn out to be smaller and a little tighter as well. But that doesn't mean that a kimono silhouette doesn't fit you. It just means that searching for a kimono second hand is extremely hard. And I'm actually 164 centimeter tall. And this is already tall in Japan. So I also have problems with actually finding kimonos in my size secondhand. That is also the reason why I do have a tutorial on how to make a kimono in your size on this channel. And it's also a very simplified way to make a kimono so everyone can make a kimono. And I receive weekly pictures from people who actually make kimonos following my instructions and everyone looks so, so, so gorgeous. 
But on the other side, because it's not a tightly fitted and tailored garment, you're wrapping it around your waist, it does not mean that your size range is only your size. You actually can add and minus a few centimeter horizontally and vertically, and you can still work with that kimono. There are so many tricks to actually work with that. And I did a workshop on that um, on my Patreon that I hopefully gonna redo in some day in the future or also make a video about it. So you'll see. So personally, I believe that kimono is actually more freeing than any Western garment nowadays because I have not only my size, I have a size range I can work with. So I do not feel too tall, too small, too fat or anything else. I just look for kimono that fit me or not. And if they don't fit me, I'm trying to remake them into my size. So when we talk about kimono sizes, I actually want you to think about the shape, not the size. The shape is way more important than anything else. When you wear a kimono, you're trying to get this specific body shape so the kimono looks good on you. A lot of people enjoy padding a lot to achieve that shape. Other people are trying different things besides padding to achieve that shape. But in the end, we are all trying to get this one shape of a kimono that actually covers up our original body shape quite well. And that's what makes me feel very comfortable in kimono. So I personally think that there is no way to get around kimono padding. It personally makes me so much more confident when wearing a kimono and walking on the street because no one can tell how my body actually looks under that. And when we even look in Western garment history, that was done throughout history. People wore padding and other shaping garments to achieve a silhouette that was in trend that time. And the only thing with kimono is that silhouette never really changed. Padding is only there to actually help how to place the color on you, where to place the obi on you. And that in total actually will make you look slimmer because there's a second topic besides padding that is very important and that is proportion. Kimono proportions are everything how you tie your obi, how big you shape your obi, how wide you have your obi on the front, how wide you have your collar, how wide you actually have this part here of the collar you're actually folding when putting on the kimono, how wide you have this here. This will all come together in one look. And there are so many tricks you can do and should do to just have the right proportions to your whole body. So I teach all of my students their proportions. I want them to remember what is their proportion, what looks good on themselves, because I am doing exactly the same thing. There are so many Japanese people coming over to me on the street and say something like, oh my gosh, I never thought that a foreigner could look so gorgeous in a kimono. Because for Japanese, foreigner always means wider shoulder, wider hips, and usually hourglass shaped. And there are a lot of other stuff that is actually just prejudices against races and things. And we don't like that. We just skip that. <laughs> and yes, I would say that I actually have wider shoulders than my mother-in-law. I would say they have wider shoulders than most of the people I know here in Japan. And it just looks good on me because I know how to place a kimono on myself to make it look like I own this. And everybody can do this because as I said, kimono is just something you wrap around yourself. There's a lot of stuff you have to fold in when dressing yourself. So there is a lot of stuff you can actually change when you wear a kimono. So I really hope that this video gave you some confidence to wear kimono and I want you to forget everything about ever you ever thought about your body. You are beautiful as you are and there is nothing wrong with it.
So I really hope you enjoy your kimono life. When you're new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher, make sure to subscribe. And I talk to you in my next video. Bye!